Hey, what's going on everybody? Ragnarok here, and I'm going to be going over my game that I played in the U.S. Amateur Team East tournament a few weeks ago. With uh, This was my game that I lost against a 2100. And I will say that any tournament you go into, I'm actually participating in a tournament on Easter weekend uh, in Philadelphia, the Philadelphia Open, in a few weeks. Uh, so hopefully I'll see some people there if you're, uh, if you're attending. But um, whenever you're doing a tournament, uh, best advice I can say is... You're, you're your own worst enemy sometimes, so um, try not to look at the opponent's rating because I feel like I might have played a little bit different if I didn't know this person's rating because sometimes you get a little scared. You're like, oh, person of 2100, uh, uh, maybe I'll play a little risky. If I play too conservative, maybe I'll lose. So um, had some weird risks in here. Uh, I will go over them. Um, and uh, just overall, interesting game. Uh, so I start off with E4. I was the white pieces here. And then his answer was knight to c6. Now, this could transpose. Now, if I do, let's just say play here, uh, which I do as my next move. Um, the, the, the reason black plays knight c6 is it's kind of testing the waters, seeing what I do first. Because I could do d4, which isn't a bad move, um, and just kind of change into any game. It's kind of like black seeing what I want to do first. Uh, as you've seen my other videos, I prefer playing the Evans Gambit. Uh, or the any variation of the Italian game. So that's kind of what I strove uh, towards. So I played knight f3. And he answered with e5. So again, this is the, exactly the same as if I did e4, e5, and then knight f3, knight c6. Same exact opening. So bishop c4. Um, his answer was to knight f6. And there's a couple ideas here that I could explore. Now the fried liver, uh, knight g5, I'm not a huge fan of, uh, just because I think that black's best answer is probably the Traxler attack here. Uh, we won't go over this in this variation, but it's kind of like you take here uh, on f7, they take back on g3. I'll just play the next few moves. Knight comes uh, with check. Uh, so they've sacrificed a piece, and if you go somewhere, the, the queen's going to come out to h4. So it's kind of like white wanted an advantage, and he goes backwards, um, and black has a nice counterplay here. Even though he's down a piece, um, you know he has some good, good play here. Uh, it's a little theoretical there. Um, so another answer you could do here would be the Max Lang attack um, with d4. I'm actually studying on that right now. Uh, but I played a little bit slower. I played d3, and that's perfectly fine. You'll probably see this in a lot of openings that if you're just starting out with the Italian game. Main ideas are just that you want to defend the e4 pawn because the knight is attacking it uh, when it did come out here. Um, the bishop didn't quite come out early, although his next move is to go bishop c5. So both players are fighting for the center. Um, black could potentially push d5 eventually, but it kind of is, uh, the, the opening I'm playing is Guico Pianissimo, it's transposed into. Whereas if I had played c3 um, at some other variation, this is Guico Piano trying to push uh, d4 eventually. But playing slowly uh, with d d3, again, uh, just kind of slow play in the center, seeing what black wants to do. Bishop to c5. Um, now this is this would originally open up the Evans Gambit, but because this knight is here uh, and I've already pushed my pawn here, it's a completely different opening. So I decide uh, I want to pin this knight, uh, which is a little preemptive actually. So this is a, a bit of an inaccuracy, um, I would say, in this in this opening. It doesn't maybe it's not an inaccuracy. It just doesn't give me an edge, which is what White should strive for. Uh, my main goal was that if he plays h6, which he does. Um, Potentially, he'll open up his king side, and my bishop's going to be safe on uh, the g3 square. Although it'll be safe, it will be less active because it's kind of tough to take this pawn on right away. All he really has to do is play d6, and then this knight uh, bishop's kind of stuck there for a while. So, not really the best opening. I would say this bishop's a little out of place, um, and then he does go with uh, g6. I would say c3 is kind of a little weird move as well. Um, it is a main idea in the Italian gambit because you want to go c3 and then push d4 eventually. You do want to make sure you protect the e4 pawn, however. Uh, but I think it's a little slow. I kind of probably would be better off if I blocked this bishop from coming in uh, and pinning my knight because the knight is a big protector and attacker of these two squares, the d4 and e5 in the center. So I kind of probably would have liked that better because if I do that, then my bishop could also come back and kind of hang out here and defend uh, the king once I do castle uh, king side. So um, a6 is just giving him a square for his bishop so it can back up and maintain its attack on this long diagonal. Um, common uh, move in the Italian game is a4. So your same idea, your bishop can back up uh, because 
this move, while it is also allowing the bishop to go back, um, it's also threatening uh, g4 or b4, b5. Uh, so knight e7, um, I believe, actually I'm not sure the reason why he made this move. Um, probably at first glance is just to be able to come to the g6 square and attack the bishop rather than pushing the pawn. Um, kind of forced me to make a decision, do I want to back up or do I want to take the knight? However, uh, I could potentially take right now and then leave an open king side, doubled up pawns. Uh, but, you know, it's not the greatest at this point because this rook can really slide over here with a nice threat on the g2 square. Uh, all he has to do is move his bishop maybe to uh, e6, try to undouble his uh, f pawns, and then queen comes up to d7 and then he castles queen side. So it's not a huge gain to take away someone's king side castle abilities if they do have a strong pawn structure on the queen side. Because uh, he can always castle the other way. So, I mean, it's a move. I could do that. But I decided to go for b4 first, chase the bishop away. I kind of give myself, as you're seeing, it's recommending to take that uh, knight. Uh, give myself some space and then allow myself to attack this f7 square. The reason I did that was because, like I said, if, if I took right now, he can always castle queenside. But in my variation, uh, what I wanted to do was force him to castle to the king side. Uh, because there's really no way that he can block this f7 square. Uh, I guess he could bring his rook over to f8, but he does castle, uh, because you do want to have two defenders on this pawn, and this knight is blocking the queen from coming over, um, and this knight can't defend uh, the f7 square. So I forced him to castle, and then I open up his king. Uh, that was my plan, at least. And then from here, uh, you do notice that this knight is still not developed. This knight is, but he can't quite come in here I mean, he could go to h4, but what's he going to do at that point? It's a little too early. Um, and then this queen has to go around these pawns, back here, and then somewhere over here to attack the king side. So I'm a little bit a ways uh, from doing that at this point. So push d4 to try to open up the center. He plays knight to g6. Um, yeah, I mean, I think his main goal is just that once, uh, let's see, once my bishop was removed from this file, this pawn... This um, square can eventually become a nice safe haven for his, his knight because the only way to really kick it away would be with playing g3. Uh, so his knight really wants to come here eventually if it can. So I castle. He plays knight uh, king to g7. Um, I think he probably should have played king to h7 at this point because uh, I think his plan is really just to, to open up. Well, actually, he can't do it right away because he has to keep two defenders on the f7 square. Uh, but eventually, if he can move this king out of the way, get this rook over to g8, and then he's uh, in good shape. So I play h4. Um, this was definitely a mistake, and I went over this uh, with uh, with my uh, with one of my chess coaches, and um, he said it was an optimistic move. And I agree now, looking after, I think I was definitely a little bold in the game. But I think my plan was really just to kick this knight away. You know, if he comes over here... Yeah, it's, it's even hard to analyze why I wanted to do this. I think maybe once he pushes some, some pawns, I could eventually get g5 with my knight secured. I couldn't tell you at this point. I mean, it's just it's just not a good move. <laughs> um, and it does allow this bishop. I mean, maybe h3 would have been a lot better, but it is what it is. So this bishop comes in. I make another weird move, and I bring my knight back to h2 to attack the bishop. But what I didn't realize after this, as he now essentially just develops his bishop, was that um, I need to make sure that I can protect both of these pawns because I believe he could potentially push this pawn, try to alleviate some of this pressure over here and get rid of my e-pawn. Uh, but then these pawns are, are both going to be under attack because um, he can take back this pawn. Actually, no, he could do that right away. Sorry. Uh, so yeah, let's say I do a random move. He could take this pawn and then he's got a nice tempo on my rook um, and a nice attack on the still on the f2 square. So essentially that forces me to bring my knight back. Bit of a waste of a move for my h4 pawn and my knight also. So he brings his queen in, uh, just getting it off the back rank, connecting the rooks. I bring this knight over, um, just developing it. I mean, it really can't move anywhere, as you can see. It can't come forward, which kind of sucks my position, although I have a lot of space with these pawns here. Um, I still don't have as much space for a lot of my pieces. Uh, I would like to have my black bishop uh, I would say to be able to actually attack this h6 square. Um, not a favorable position for me. And that's the thing about good players. They're slowly making their um, advance on your position. 
as you'll see in here. So another uh, forcing move I have to take is pawn back, because if I move my bishop, um, if we go back, if I move my bishop, he's just going to take here, uh, and neither one of these can take back without being lost. All right, so I take back here. Um, I like this idea because I'm at least uh, putting pressure on this. Um, you know, I could trade and then distract his rook away if it does trade. But I still have to move my bishop first. And, you know, of course, it didn't matter where it went. Either one of these squares, the knight was going to attack it. Um, and I don't really want to lose it, so I just defend it with my rook. Now his king can finally move over because my bishop is off this square. His queen is also defending the f7 square. Uh, but his plan is really just start pushing this pawn, get his queen uh, in here in the action, and bring his rook on this, on this file, uh, attacking my king. Uh, now I bring my knight back. I think it probably would have been a much better move to bring my bishop back here. That way I get to hold on to it. I could potentially uh, push this without too much of a worry of the bishop or knight coming in. Uh, I've got more defense. And plus, uh, the rook coming in here, I'm defending it. But my main goal here um, was just to bring my, my knight up to g3, knowing that a pawn can't really push it away. That was the goal anyway. Rook comes over. Knight has to block because it's being attacked twice. Now he's attacking my queen with tempo. I just bring it right back to uh, c2. And then he takes my bishop, which uh, I'm not sure if that was the best move. That was a really, really nicely placed knight. Um, so I'm a little fortunate there, but no matter what piece I take back, whether it's the queen or the rook, um, his bishop can come in here soon. But I think first he's threatening to bring his bishop in here. If I take, then his queen's going to come in uh, afterwards. So that's the idea he's going for. So I don't like this move either. Um, I kind of like my rook over there. Uh, I think I moved it so that I could start to take this pawn. If he takes back, obviously I get the queen, but it's just a little bit too slow uh, because he forces my queen away, has to move, and then his queen moves off that diagonal anyway. So now my rook's a little bit misplaced in this square, unfortunately. So I moved my king because what he was threatening was, let's say I took here, um, he could then take my knight because this bishop is... Uh, pinning this pawn so my pawn can't take the queen. Uh, that threat's there whether it's for the queen or the rook. So I kind of have this pawn stuck here. So I decide to move my king over, get it out of the way. This pawn is at least defending the h4 square for now. He just makes a waiting move. I bring my rook over, we trade. Um, and then, yeah, so his pawns start coming in. So that's why he wanted to trade there. Get my rooks away from the center so that this rook couldn't take this pawn. Um, this is really the best move I can think of. Uh, I'm not sure any better moves, just looking at it again. I mean, my knight can't move because it's checkmate. Um, so I gotta be a little bit careful there. That's why he's threatening this move uh, to push. So I have to react here. Uh, and if I take here, um, let's see, what's the threat? His threat would be probably, he could probably just trade here. Uh, or maybe, no, now that this pawn is out of the way, he could just push this pawn, uh, forcing my knight to go somewhere, and then slowly like working his way in. That's really the idea there. So uh, let's see, I go back to h2, uh, attacking the queen, and he takes the pawn, which is kind of what I hoped for, I guess you could say, uh, but my whole plan is a little slow again. I take here with an attack on the queen, also a double attack, kind of like my only counterplay attack here. Um, threatening this pawn. So he has to stay on this square, so he goes to h5. Um, I take here just to try to open things up, and then I attack the knight. Now things are getting a little little close, um, because my goal here, as he comes up to, which is you know a good move here, I can't take his, his rook. My goal here is to get both my rook and my queen up here, um, potential checkmates if his rook ever goes over here to try to attack my knight. Um, all I really have to do is get my queen here, and then it is checkmate. But the idea of getting the rook there as well means that I can checkmate on h8 uh, with the knight blocking the uh, g6 square. So that's my plan, but a little bit too slow. Uh, he comes up here. Unfortunately, moving the best move as it shows here is going to d1. Moving my queen away, hoping that he was going to go here, and then I just have a nice checkmate. Uh, but unfortunately, what I missed in the game was the bishop taking here. And now my king is out of spaces to go to. So a move like this, for example, uh, would be met with queen takes knight, king takes queen, checkmate. Um, so that's the problem with this bishop coming in here. I can't move it away, and there's a nice sacrifice that I can't really uh, get rid of. 
Um, so I think the other move I was thinking of was maybe, I think it was g3 to try to give myself some space so that the queen take uh, on h2 is no longer uh, an option. Because if he does do it, you know, he can't check me anymore. Um, he can check me here, but then he's going to uh, lose a piece. One of these has to go. So I think that was my second idea. But the problem with that... Let me see if I remember. I think it was just simply bishop takes here, um, threatening checkmate next move. This rook can't block it. Uh, best move I can do really is come back here, and it's not not a great scenario for me. Um, he could probably, yeah, just win the game. Simple like that. Um, so, yeah, he's got a really nice attack going on here. Um, so he ends up, let me see. Uh, yeah, so he takes the bishop takes here. So I can't do either the bishop move and I can't move this rook. Well, actually, really, I have to worry about his queen taking next, uh, which is why I come back here. Uh, because now if he takes, I take his rook back and there's no checkmate threat. So I come back here uh, to, uh, let's see, to f5. And his rook moves to g5. And I thought that this was my chance, I guess, to try to like win checkmate. But it's just too slow. Um, he does take the knight, so now he's up a knight. I take the queen, so I'm up a queen to a knight. Check. Again, there's really, I can't go either one of these squares because of that bishop, so I have to block with the knight. Rook takes, checkmate unless I move, and queen takes uh, the rook. So now we're in a, what you could consider an even end game, and you know, rook five points, two bishops uh, at six points, and I've got four pawns, he's got five. Uh, the problem, though, is that I have both of these pawns on dark squares, and I can't easily defend them, um, as you'll see. So I just go after this pawn, his bishop now. Nothing I can do about it. I mean, the best maybe I could have done was just to come back here. A little bit passive. I don't know what the outcome would have been in this scenario, uh, but maybe a little bit of a fighting chance. I don't know. Um, I think his king probably would have eventually join the battle and maybe trade off this pawn, have this pass pawn. Uh, it would have been difficult anyway. Um, I, I like his position better here. Uh, so yeah, I just trade, check, just play out the next few moves. He has gets this pawn, he's guaranteed to get the other pawn. Now he has this pass pawn on the B file, uh, five moves away. I think there was one mistake in here. Uh, I talked to him after the game, he said I missed. I'll show you here. So the great thing about this is that he has all four of these squares blocked blocking my rook so I mean my rook really can't come here it's just gonna what's it gonna do you know it's gonna eventually need to be traded for that pawn uh, and also it's blocking off my king from coming in um, so I just do a check get behind I think I missed yeah he came here so blocking off all of the pieces here I could have taken the pawn again it, it may have been a draw it may have been uh, a still a loss for me but um, that, that was something I missed. I think I just moved. I did check, and then he moved, yeah. So the, the pawn starts marching in. So that was my loss there. Uh, but hey, against the 2100, I thought I did pretty good. Uh, a couple of giant mistakes, I guess I would say, but you know, that's how you learn. Um, so biggest takeaway, don't worry about what your opponent's rating in, is uh, just try to play your best. Play really as if they're a grandmaster. Who knows who you're going to play? Especially if you're playing an unrated tournament. You'll never know. They could be a grandmaster in training. You'll never know. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, I will be uploading the last game of my tournament, which is the French defense I was playing against as white. Uh, so hopefully you'll enjoy that. And hopefully you enjoyed this. And make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks, guys. I will see you next week.